Hey guys, so this episode is all about textures, how to load and access textures from within Pixie.js's texture cache. So let's dive in. We're going to start with our finished source from episode two, just to simplify our code. So using Pixie application. And we're actually using a texture here and loading it into a sprite, but we don't actually know when this texture is loaded or when we can use it in our application. So we're going to clear out this code. The way that Pixie manages textures is through a texture cache. And I'm just gonna log it out here so we can take a look at what's inside of it. But this is where it retains all the textures that we've loaded in our application in memory. Next, I'm going to create a handler for our load complete event. And this is just where we're going to execute all the code that we want to once our loader has finished loading all our assets. Next, we're going to actually create our loader, and you can do this with the Pixie loader class. And you can create as many loaders as you want with this class. So you can instantiate as many different loaders to load as many different sequences of assets as you want. But we're only using one loader here. So Pixie actually creates an instance of a loader for us through pixie.loader.shared. So we're just going to reference this existing loader and use that in this example. Now that we have our loader, we need to load assets into it. So we just call add on our loader, passing in the URL to the asset which we want to load. Then we need to listen for our oncomplete event. So we access the oncomplete object in our loader, calling add, and then passing in the handle load complete method that we created. Now we need to actually do something once our asset loads. So let's go into our handle load complete function and we need a reference to our texture. So we can access it through the loader. So we'd go loader.resources and then use the name of the texture. And in this case, that's the URL we use to load it. And then dot texture. So we have our texture and we need to pass it into our sprite. I'm going to create a variable for our sprite outside of the complete handler so that we can reference it elsewhere as well. So then in our create handler, we create our sprite with pixie.sprite passing in the texture. So the rest of this should look familiar from episode two. We're just setting the anchors X and Y of the sprite to 0.5, so it's at the center. And then we're calling add child on our stage, passing in the sprite to add it to our scene. Then we're adding a callback to our ticker, passing in our animate method. Then in our animate method, we're going to set the sprites X and Y to the app renderer.screens width and height divided by two. And this will put it at the center of our scene. So now we need to call load on our loader so to actually begin loading our asset. And if we test this, you'll see we have pretty much exactly what we had before. Our sprite is rendered on the screen. So now we can listen to other events on our loader to keep track of our load progress. For example, we can listen to the onload event, which will fire every time an individual asset completes loading. We can get an on error callback so that we can get notified whenever something goes wrong within loading an asset. And we can also add an on progress callback so we can get progress updates on the status of our loader. So then we just need to add the actual callback methods. So we'll start with the progress handler, and this can take in both the loader and the resource as parameters. And so we can actually log out the progress percentage by accessing the loader progress property. So then we can go in and add our other event handlers like our asset load handler, which will trigger each time an asset finishes loading as well as our error handler, which will trigger each time there's an error within the load progress. So if we test this with our console, you'll see that it's loaded pretty quickly and we're only loading one asset. So let's go in and load a second asset and add that to our loader. And then if we go in and test it, you'll see we're getting two asset loaded events being fired for our two separate assets, as well as those progress events that show our progress percentage. 
So we can also organize our event handler callbacks differently by chaining them on the loader object. And we can do this when we add objects to our loader as well. So when you chain them like this, you add your load complete handler as a parameter to your load call. Then for the other callbacks, we call an on and then pass in the event that we want to listen to and then the callback method. So we simply repeat this for our progress, our error, and our load event. And this is just another way of writing the same thing. So when we test it, we get the same output. We also have access to our loader and resource inside our asset load event, just like in our progress event. So we could log out the resource's name in our console. And you'll see it traces out the asset name along with each load event. So let's say we want to change a sprite's texture. Well, we can actually do that with the sprites texture property and simply pointing it to the new texture reference. So if we set a timeout for about two seconds and then we set the sprites texture to our other asset that we've loaded, the other texture, it will change on that sprite. And you can see by previewing this after about two seconds, the texture changes. So another thing we can do to clean things up a little and not have to write the URL to our assets everywhere is create aliases to them. So when we add them to our loader, our first parameter can be the alias that we want to use for this texture. And then the second will be the URL path to the asset. This allows us to access it on the resources object of that loader by its alias name. So we can update that everywhere. And again, testing this, the output will be exactly the same. So if you remember back to the beginning of the episode where we logged out the texture cache, you can actually look at it in your logs and see the two images and textures that we are retaining in memory. So this is where they're being stored inside of Pixie.js. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.